The world is changing rapidly. Wars and rumors of wars are abundant. Civil unrest, economic collapse, a global economic reset, natural disasters, and the second coming of Jesus Christ is on the horizon. Are you prepared? Welcome to Truth Fed. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which is given to you by Christ Jesus, that you are enriched in everything by him in all utterance and knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that you come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I wanted to read that passage out of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 to start the show, uh, because I was thinking to myself yesterday just how blessed um, I am to have all of you. And I praise God for you, and I cherish your emails and the comments uh, that you guys send me to lift me up and to encourage me, because sometimes, my friends, this work can be challenging. While there's nothing more fulfilling, uh, more rewarding, more enjoyable uh, than speaking, teaching, or preaching the Word of God, it can still be challenging, because with that comes a lot of opposition. You know, people are going to show up who call themselves Christians. Uh, who have their own opinions about what you have to say. Many of them are people who don't study the Scriptures daily and haven't a clue what they're talking about. Uh, their spiritual opposition and many other things that make this work not always so easy and pleasant. Uh, so I just wanted to take a minute and say, I'm very thankful for all of you, and I praise God for all of you and uh, what you do to lighten my burden. Some of you subscribe to the show. Some of you uh, pray, and some of you send emails, and, and some of you encourage me through comments, and, and all of that matters. All of it adds up, and uh, praise God for all of you uh, who participate. And uh, just all of you who listen, who take the time to hear the truth, to make my work worthwhile. It all matters. And uh, while I have a church that I attend on Sunday mornings, you guys feel like my real church. Not in the sense like I'm the leader of the church, but in the sense that we're all in this together. You know, we're all in this together. Um, and the reason I say that is because you guys are the ones who understand. You see God's prophecies being fulfilled before your very eyes. You see the signs of the times. You're watching and waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. You're begging God for forgiveness and mercy, not only for yourselves, but for your country and the church and the people around you and the lost and this dying world. You're heeding the warnings of the watchmen and the prophets. That's not getting done at any church that I've seen. And I don't mean to sound negative, you know, sound so negative towards the church, but I have to, under the obedience of Christ, speak the truth. And the truth is, is a lot of pastors are wolves in sheep's clothing. And they're leading their flock right off a cliff and into the pits of hell and with their false gospels and their doctrines. And I'm just trying to warn you, plead with you to repent and to fall on your knees and to beg the Lord God for mercy because the end is near and you need to be ready not only for the return of Christ, but to spiritually deal with the things that are coming upon this earth. We're going to read about some of those things that are coming upon the earth in just a few minutes when we read Revelation chapter 6, and we're also going to read Daniel chapter 11. Hopefully I'll actually get to our reading this time. But be on guard and study the Scriptures daily to make sure that what's being spoken from the pulpit is true. Make sure that what I'm saying is true. Don't just take my word for it. Pray about it. Ask the Spirit to reveal it. Acts chapter 17, 11 says, Now these were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica, Thessalonica, for they received the word with great eagerness, examining, examining the Scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Does it say examining the Scriptures, you know, occasionally? Or taking a glance at it or, you know, listening to an audio. No, it says examining the scriptures daily. 
to see whether these things were so, the things being said were so. Are these things true? Don't just take your pastor's word for it. You, you wouldn't believe how many friends I have. And I'll be like, man, this is what's going on. And they'll be like, and we'll just pretend that the pastor's name is Bob. They'll be like, well, Bob says this. Immediately, it's like, well, Bob says this, so that's what I believe. I really like Bob. We're great family friends, and we, you know, we have dinners together, and he seems to be really smart. And look, examine the scriptures daily to see whether they're true. Stop listening to what Bob has to say for 30 seconds. Get your actual Bible out, dust it off, blow the dust off, you know, peel the pages back, read it, pray, and ask the Spirit to reveal the truth to you, and examine the scriptures. Don't just go get your favorite audio tape of your favorite pastor. Read the Bible. And I say that as somebody who used to just go with whatever I was hearing preached from the most, my favorite pastors. And I still have some favorite pastors, and I like them, and I think they're doing a great job, and they're leading people to Jesus, and, but I don't agree with them on everything. Now that I've taken the time to examine the Scriptures for myself, because there's some interesting things in the Scriptures that my favorite pastors seem to overlook and not want to talk about and not want to touch because it's, well, quite frankly, it's scary. Some of it's absolutely insane. Um, the things that are coming upon this earth and the things we're going to be seeing in the cosmos, according to the Bible, sound like something out of an ancient fairy tale at times. And the church doesn't want to talk about it because it's uncomfortable. It makes them uncomfortable. They don't want to talk about some of the things that Jesus says because it makes them uncomfortable and it doesn't fit in with their perfect little just come and do your sinner's prayer and walk away type of theology. So examine the scriptures daily to see whether these things are so. I don't know if you guys saw this, but there was this article, and uh, it will be up at my website if I haven't. I don't think I've put it up there yet, but it will be. It says, mega church leader. These mega churches, I'm telling you, man. Wow, they're leading so many people astray. Mega church leader Perry Noble rewrites the Ten Commandments. Rewrite, so, it says, I'm going to rewrite the Ten Commandments. Wow. Do you see what I mean when I say that some of these pastors who are shepherding thousands upon thousands of people are leading them right into the pits of hell? Let me read some of this article. This is what happens when an unqualified men are put in positions of leadership in the church. Perry Noble, who poses as a pastor of New Spring Church in South Carolina, has never been set apart through ord, uh, ordination to the gospel ministry, and rightly so, in a recent passage, recent message, Noble proceeded to simulate the law of God, emasculate, I'm sorry, the law of God before an audience of thousands of young people. He also demonstrated his utter ignorance. This guy who claims to hear directly from God, not from the word, God's words, wrote his message in 10 minutes, and his staff confirms that he has heard from God on this. His staff. Who, who's his staff? That's what, that's what I want to know. Let's be clear on this. If Noble is called out for his twisting of Scripture and distortion of the Word of God, he is putting God on the hook for it all. Noble claims that God's Ten Commandments are not actually commandments. Listen to this. Noble claims that God's Ten Commandments are not actually commandments, but but promises. Does anyone remember that Paul in the New Testament stated that the Fifth Commandment was the First Commandment? While what I just mentioned, uh, and then the fifth commandment is with a promise. While what I just mentioned is Greek, Paul is clear that the law of God is comprised of commandments, not promises. Promises are something different. In his message, Noble claims that he knows nothing of Hebrew, and I'm guessing he knows nothing of Greek. However, he recounts a story that he knows a Jewish friend who drove him around Israel told him there is no Hebrew word for command. So this guy who doesn't even who doesn't know any of these languages says, "Well, the Ten Commandments are just promises. There is no Hebrew word for the word command." Uh, really? Because there's a word called ma amar in Hebrew. Words origin from amar definition a word comma command. There is a word in Hebrew for command. It's called ma um, amar ma amar. M-A-A-M-A-R. 
Short definition, command. I mean, this guy just doesn't... Here's, here's the point I'm trying to make, is we have these people shepherding thousands of people, and they say, you know what, I just heard from God, uh, we're just going to... The Ten Commandments, they're not commandments anymore, so don't, don't worry about obeying them. Uh, they're just, yeah, just some promises. Um, you know, God really didn't know what he was doing, you know. <laughs> I mean, by the way, you know, I, I've never, I don't know anything about Hebrew or Greek, but there, a friend told me while I was in Israel that there is no Hebrew word for the word command. Uh, and then, of course, they're actually, but there's people that are following this guy. They're following him right through that wide gate that leads to destruction. I pray for these people. I pray for this pastor. God, open their eyes to the truth. And I wonder how many churches this is taking place in today. And just like I mentioned yesterday, the church, you know, I feel like is more focused on, well, here's how you have a better life, and uh, here's some Bible application to help you live a better life and to be happier. And uh, instead, we ought to be preaching, like I said, Christ crucified, wake up, the end is near, look at what's going on around you, let's have a prayer vigil for our brothers and sisters who are being butchered around the world. Those are the type of things that I feel like the church should be doing in this time. Is there a place for some of this other stuff? Sure. You know, there's some great books out there. But in the church, we ought to be hearing the word of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, also this guy, aside from the fact that uh, there is a Hebrew word for command, uh, he's also missing Matthew 5.18, which says, For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, this is Jesus speaking, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till it is fulfilled. You can't change the commandments, my friend. You can't change the commandments. Good night. Anyway, that is the end of my rant uh, for this morning. Let's get into our scripture reading, starting with the book of Daniel. Then we'll read Revelation chapter 6 and wrap up the podcast. I just wanted to start the show by saying thank you and also to warn you to be on guard. Make sure you're studying the scriptures daily. Don't allow yourself to be deceived by pastors, by other men and women, by me, no one. Study the scriptures daily and you'll know the truth. Let's get into the Word of God. Daniel, chapter 11. Also, in the first year of Darius, the Medi, I, even I, stood up to confirm and strengthen him. And now I will tell you the truth. Behold, three more kings will arise in Persia, and the fourth shall be richer than Amal. By his strength, through his riches, he shall stir up against all the realm of Greece. Then the mighty king shall arise, who shall rule with great dominion, and do according to his will. And when he has arisen, his kingdom shall be broken up and divided toward the four winds of heaven, but not among his prosperity, nor according to his dominion, with which he ruled. For his kingdom shall be uprooted, even for others besides these." Also, the king of the south shall become strong, as well as one of his princes. And he shall gain power over him and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. And at the end of some years, they shall join forces. For the daughter of the king of the south shall go to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the power of her authority, and neither nor his authority shall stand. But she shall be given up with those who brought her and with him who begot her, and with him who strengthened her in those times. But from a branch of her roots one shall arise in his place, who shall come with an army into the fortress of the king of the north, and deal with them and prevail. And he shall also carry their gods captive to Egypt with their princes and their precious articles of silver and gold. And he shall continue more years in the king of the north." Also, the king of the north shall come into the kingdom of the king of the south, but he shall return to his own land. However, his son shall stir up strife and assemble a multitude of great forces, and one shall certainly come and overwhelm and pass through. Then he shall return to his fortress and stir up strife 
and the king of the south shall be moved with rage, and they go out and fight with him. And the king of the north, who shall muster a great multitude, but with the multitude shall be given into the hand of his enemy. When he has taken away the multitude, his heart will be lifted up, and he will cast down tens of thousands, but he will not prevail. For the king of the north will return and muster a multitude greater than the former, and shall certainly come at the end of some years with a great army and much equipment. Now in those times many shall rise up against the king of the south. Also violent men of your people shall exalt themselves in fulfillment of the vision, but they shall fall. So the king of the north shall come and build a siege mountain and take a fortified city and fortresses of the south shall not withstand him. Even his choice troops shall have no strength to resist, but he who comes against him shall do according to his own will, and no one shall stand against him. He shall stand in the glorious land with destruction in his power. He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him. Thus shall he do. And he shall give him the daughter of woman to destroy it, but she shall not stand with him or be far for him. After this, he shall turn his face to the coastlands and shall take many, but a ruler shall bring reapproach against them to the end. And with the reapproach removed, he shall turn back on him. Then shall turn his face toward the fortress of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. There shall arise in his place one who imposes taxes on this glorious kingdom. Within a few days he shall be destroyed, but not in anger or in battle. And in his place shall arise a vile person to whom they will not give the honor of royalty, but he shall come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by intrigue. With the force of the flood they shall be swept away from before him and be broken, and also the prince of the covenant. And after the league is made with him, he shall act deceitfully, for he shall come up and become strong with a small number of people. He shall enter peaceably, even into the righteous places of the province. And he shall do what his fathers have not done, nor his forefathers. He shall disperse among them the plunder, spoil, and riches. And he shall devise his plans against the strongholds, but only for a time. He shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall devise plans against him. Yes, those who eat of the portion of his delicacies shall destroy him. His army shall be swept away, and many shall fall down slain. Both these kings' hearts shall be bent on evil, and he shall speak lies at the same table. But it shall not prosper for the end will still be at the appointed time. While returning to his land with great riches, his heart shall be moved against the holy covenant, so he shall do damage and return to his own land. At the appointed time, he shall return and go toward the south, but it shall not be like the former or the latter, for ships from Cyprus shall come against him. Therefore he shall be grieved and return in rage against the holy covenant and do damage. He shall return and shall regard for those who forsake the holy covenant, and forces shall be mustered by him, and he shall defile the sanctuary fortress. Then they shall take away the daily sacrifices and place there an abomination of desolation. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. And those of the people who understand shall instruct many. Yet for many days they shall fall by the sword and flame, by captivity and plundering. Now when they fall, they shall be aided with a little help, but many shall join with them by intrigue. And some of those understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, and make them white until the end of time, because it is still for the appointed time. The king shall do according to his own will. He shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemes against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished. For what he has been determined shall be done. He shall regard neither the god of his fathers, nor desire of women, nor regard any god, for he shall exalt himself above them all. But in their place he shall honor a god of fortresses, and a god which his fathers did not know shall honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and pleasant things. 
Thus he shall act against the strongest fortress with a foreign god, which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and divide the land for gain. At the time of the end of the king of the south shall attack him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter the countries, overwhelm them, and pass through. He shall also enter the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape from his hand. Edom, Moab, and the prominent people of Ammon. He shall stretch out his hand against the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, and over the precious things of Egypt. Also the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall follow at his heels. But news from the east and the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go out with great fury to destroy and annihilate many. And he shall plant the tents of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and no one will help him. Revelation chapter 6 now I saw the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And the people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and a three quarts of barley for a denarius. And do not harm the oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over the fourth of the earth to kill with the sword with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw into the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each one of them. And it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. I looked and he opened the sixth seal and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became like blood. The stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it was rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of its place and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the commanders and the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid themselves in the caves and the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come. Who is able to stand? All right, so Daniel chapter 11 is still, you know, I, I, it's one, it's, it's, first of all, it's a long chapter, and it requires a lot of study to really understand it, and I, I just haven't put in enough study on this particular passage to have a clear understanding. Obviously, the end is talking about the Antichrist. Uh, that part we do get. Uh, we see the abomination of desolation taking place. Uh, this leader is going to show up. He's going to forsake the Holy Covenant. Uh, so whatever covenant that he makes, he's going to break it. And um, he's going to defile the sanctuary, it says, and then he shall take away the daily sacrifices and place there an abomination of desolation. Jesus warned that when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel, 
So he's referring to this passage right here to run for the hills, to not even go back for your jacket, to get out. So those of you who live in Israel, if this is literal and it takes place there and you see this, when you see this moment, don't even go back for your jacket. Get out. And uh, so, you know, we see some things that make sense, some things that, you know, but I don't know for sure who all these kings are at this time. Um, I'm sure there's somebody out there who's done a better study of it than I have. And maybe you have some ideas. Maybe you've studied it and you want to share them with me. Um, But I need to keep reading. I'm going to continue to, you know, I've only been through the book of Daniel a few times. I need to continue to read through it uh, because every time I do, I catch something new, uh, which is the case, you know, even for Revelation. And I can't even tell you how many times I've read through that. Uh, but in Revelation, we've got six of the seals uh, that we read, and then tomorrow we'll get into you know some of the others. Uh, we'll get into the seventh as we read chapter seven. Uh, but the first seal is the seal to conquer. Second seal is a conflict on earth. Third seal is scarcity on earth, uh, which I think uh, probably has something to do with an economic collapse. Fourth seal is widespread death on earth, which is a combination of of uh, you know, people dying from the sword, people dying from hunger. It says even people by the beast of the earth being killed. Folks, there's some things coming up on the earth that people aren't going to believe. I'm just going to tell you that ahead of time. And I don't get into it so much because it literally people glaze over. Uh, but there's things coming upon the earth that you've, that you've never seen with your own eyes. It says that men's hearts will fail them for fear. Men's hearts are going to... What's coming upon the earth is going to be so scary so strange, so out there, their hearts are going to fail them. They're literally going to have heart and heart attacks because they're so afraid of what's coming upon the earth. There's going to be beasts on this earth eating people. And that's according to the Word of God, not according to me. Don't call me a crazy. And then go study, you know, go study the times of Noah. Because Jesus says it's going to be like that. Go study the times of Noah. Tell me there's not some strange things going on there. Go read the book of Enoch, which... Many early Christians thought of as a very valuable text. It was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls, as an example. Uh, Jude quotes out of it, uh, quotes right out of the book of Enoch. Go check that out uh, and do a study of what the times of Noah were like. Uh, And remember that Jesus said it'll be like that in the last days. And tell me there's not some strange things coming upon the earth that are going to cause men's hearts to fail them. Okay? Okay. Uh, then we have the fifth seal with the cry of the martyrs. And we're seeing a lot of martyrs right now. Uh, and I, this is just a birth pain. It's going to get worse. God help us, it's going to get worse. And uh, you see the cries of these mar- martyrs. And they say, how long, Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood? And a white robe was given to each one of them. And he said, for them to rest a little while longer until the number You know, God's got it numbered. He's decided how many there's going to be. How do I know that? It says right here, to rest a while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. God has decided that there will be a certain amount of martyrs. And then we have the cosmic disturbances which is also going to blow people's minds when they see the things taking place in the cosmos and the things falling on the earth out of the sky. There's going to be so many things plummeting into the earth that it's going to look as though, it's going to look as though a fig tree is dropping its late fruit. I mean, you've seen leaves fall, right, in the fall, how they just kind of blow off the tree. It's kind of like that, except it's going to be stars from heaven falling into the earth. Strange. It's going to be a. It's going to be a crazy journey, and I believe we're beginning this journey. I believe 2015. Uh, you know, especially as we wrap up at the end of the year with a final blood moon, just madness, just complete madness. But those of you who are resting in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not going to be, you know, as afraid as the average person. And here's the good news. Because you've been reading the Word of God, because you've been studying these things, because you're expecting these things to come, you're going to be prepared to give an answer 
The Bible says for you to be prepared to give an answer. You're going to be prepared to give an answer for those people who are freaking out and they're coming to you and they're saying, I remember you said something about this. What's going on? And you're going to have the answer and they're going to fall on their knees and repent before the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's going to be a great harvest and you're going to be participating in it. You want something to look forward to? That's what you should look forward to. And I have to tell myself that too because I'll be honest. There are days where I'm like, you know, why even get out of bed? You know, it's over. There's no, there's, there's no future to look forward to. It's all coming to an end. Things are only going to get worse. But then I have to remind myself there's something more important to come to look forward to. It's called the great harvest. It's called being a participant in what God's doing on this earth. Let us pray that it be filled with the Spirit. I pray that you're filled with the Spirit. I pray that we are filled with the Spirit and we're able to go out and complete the work of God and finish and persevere till the end so that we can stand before the Son of Man and hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. That is the show for today. I thank God for all of you. Continue to send me the emails. I'm going to do my best to respond to some of them today. I'm so sorry. There's literally more than I can handle, and that's good because I sometimes I read that sometimes I'm feeling discouraged, and an email will come in, and I'm like, "What I'm doing matters. This matters. This makes a difference." And I just appreciate all of you uh, and the way all of you participate. And so, God bless. Thank you so much. Peace and grace be with you, and I'll speak to you again tomorrow.